What is going on guys, it is your boy Cash and we are here today to talk about the new cards. There's a decent amount this time, so it's gonna be a decently long video. Like I said, that they should be doing way more reveals going forward. Uh, as we see, the pre-release is gonna be dropping in literally six days, so we should see a lot with that. First one is going Swordcraft. They're finally revealing some Swordcraft, the gold and the Lego. So let's go with the gold. Stroke of Conviction. And you see uh, Baleon, Mistelina, and Erica in the back. Choose. Use play points. This I don't know why they say it like that. It's so weird. Uh, and play this card as a Erica's insight. Blah blah blah. Or three of them instead. You can play for six, which I'm assuming is all of them, most likely. Uh, instead, summon two quick bladers. Deal five damage to a random enemy follower and give plus one plus to all allied followers. That is big. Let's just double check because we do have them all down here. Erica's slight is the summon two bladers. Mistelina sword plate is the five damage to a random enemy. So for three play points, you can do five damage to a random enemy. That's really good for stealth, which I don't think is really big right now. And Billion's command is to give plus one, plus one to all allied followers. Now, this type of card, I don't really think, I mean for six, if you think about the ultimate value of this, is that for six play points, you get the cost of three cards, uh, that three cards that cost three, so that's kind of big. You can also hold on, which I think some people might even hold on to this part. I did not mean to make you size that. Uh, but I actually can hold on to this because it's plus one, plus one to all allies in command. Oh no, you have to play it as Malian's command. For three costs, you can still do it, but still pretty good. I think uh, this card, will it go in over what they currently have? I don't think so. Uh, the two quick bladers is like kind of filling up the board. <laughs> And I'm not too fond of that. As far as the two quick bladers, with Lencia, you'll have the turn seven if Lencia is still in the meta. I got, I, like I said, at the end, once they reveal all the cards, we'll see what all the cards that are leaving, and then we'll really be able to theory craft and all that good stuff. But let's go over to the Lego the Grayson Accelerated Swordsman, which looks ridiculous, even though his thing is still blurry. But it's a Commander Machina. Wow. Uh, during your turn, when this card is added to your hand from your deck, reveal it. Then give your leader the following effect until the end of your turn. Whenever an ally Machina follower comes into play, give it plus one and rush. That's cool. So when you draw that card, you will automatically get uh, you would automatically get all your Machinas on that turn. We'll get rush. Cool about this, if you do some weird stuff, you could possibly like draw it specifically. It is a commander, so there are some cards that draw specific commanders. And there's a specific card that actually draws commanders so you can really specifically draw it because when it comes as it says when this card is added to your hand for your deck it doesn't matter how it happens it just it will happen and then every machina follower after that will get rushed but it's only for that turn now it also says here fanfare so when you actually pay it for five and it yeah, it involves full stats. Give your leader the following effect. Whenever an ally of Machina follower attacks an enemy follower, deal one damage to the enemy. This effect's not stacked, won't last for the rest of the match. So that is interesting. So think about this. You play this on turn five and it activates this. You don't have to evolve it. It's the same thing. Also, it has rush itself. So when you attack and it dashes forward, it's going to do one damage to the enemy followers, uh, to the enemy leader. So, and every time you get any attacks off, it will do one damage. So it's helps the rush aspect of it so i kind of do like it but again it, evo sword is just so strong <laughs> just i don't know if this is enough to do machina sword because machina sword was okay it was a lot of spammy stuff you know a lot of board flood but it just doesn't see as good as a or as consistent as what um evo sword is so at the moment unless there's something that is leaving evo sword that makes this card not as good i would have just assumed that that's you know but it, it's cute it's cute <laughs> it's real cute Know, depending on whatever they put in there. So now we got Dragoncraft's Curse Fure, which is another little switch choosy card. They, this seems to be the, the thing that they love. And if Overflow is activated, you get both, which is weird. But as you can see, you can play for three costs. You can probably get an empty play orb or destroy a random enemy follow for three? No, say it ain't so. That sounds stupid. Validate's Claw is destroy a random enemy follower for three costs? Rowan's Roar is gain an empty play orb. So, I mean, that is a interesting trade-off to gain an empty play orb to get you closer to it but playing a three <laughs> i mean if you just think about this card as playing it for turn three right overflow is already active so then you're gonna get the free play orb and then destroy enemy follower even thinking about it even if it's turn 10 and you're or you already have 10 play orbs three kill a random enemy follower is dumb strong that is ridiculously strong I think every dragon is crafting, uh, putting this card in their deck. I don't see why you wouldn't. It, it <laughs> you ramp, if you, you look at your hand, you look at the board state and you say, well, I, ramping's pretty good here. If not, oh, I need to kill this minion. <laughs> it's really big, it's 11 to 1,000. 
but it can be destroyed by cards and spells and effects, I'm doing that. I think that you just add that card in no matter what. I don't see why you don't. That card is extra stupid. So Dragoncraft definitely got blessed right there. We already went over uh, the shovel card, uh, unless they got better art for it. Yay, it looks a little bit better, not cool. Anyway, so now Gremory, Gremory coming back, and it's so weird where it's like re uh, Rebirth of Glory was they make the cards over and over again, and it's like they kind of keep doing that. I want to see different cards, uh, different card, you know, people. Gremory is already in the game and it already pissed people off. I guess it's maybe to follow, I know I haven't read it yet, but Daria pissed people off. It's like, let's bring back the cards that piss people off and see if it, that makes me think that, you know, maybe Forrest will get another roach. <laughs> just the stack on the roach. All right, let's read it. So I uh, see invocation. Interesting. No invocations uh, so far. They're going to something else even older. At the start of your turn, if you have more shadows than cards in your deck, invoke this card. That is interesting. Regardless of what it is, that's a cool way of doing it. So if you have a heavy draw deck, you can go through. But you don't even need to because if you were to get a crap ton of shadows, this card comes out. But what does it do? When this card comes, when this follower comes into play, if you have more shadows than cards in your deck, again, uh, give your leader, leader the following effect. Once each turn, when you perform necromancy, gain X shadows and recover X play points. X equals the necromancy cost. This effect is not stackable and lasts for the rest of the match. It is also a 1-3 uh, ward that costs 2. So when this follower comes into play, so this is obviously going into the loveliness that is reanimation. Reanimation is, you know, they've been working with it a lot. So when this follower comes into play, if you have more shadows, at any time. So if, yes, this card coming out randomly is pretty cool, right, for the ward. The first invocation effect that it comes out with will automatically trigger the second part of it, which is play points back pretty much, right? And you're also gonna gain shadows. That's that's absolutely nuts. Because if you pay attention, this card does not use the shadows. It does, it does not use the shadows. So when you use your shadows, you're gonna gain the shadows. <laughs> like, is that what it's saying? When you perform necromancy, gain X shadows recover x play points x equals the necromancy cost so you pretty much get a free necromancy spell or effect the free necromancy effect and gain play points after it so that is silly strong i think that we would have to go into the game and see how many like what's the biggest cost that you can get the most that we know of if you know if we're really thinking about it i think it's like the most that i know of would actually be from aisha and that is eight. That's the one that I can think off of the top of my head as like the highest. So you could literally play Aisha attack, you know, with the open to the leader, get eight play points back after that. Woo! And remember, you could do each turn. So they could, you know, depending on what they flesh out for this, will be nice. Or oh no, uh, oh yes, the uh, the corpse father or whatever like that. That that one's based on. You use pretty much all your shadows based on the highest defense of the enemy, and then you can get that all right back. So it's going to be, you know, it helps with the control. I definitely like that card. This card is really cool. I really like it. Hope to see more. Hope to see more. And they're showcasing the other gold, which is Friends Forever, another multi-card. And we're going to be seeing Luna's Game or Anea's Friendship. Necromancy 4, as we just, uh, we just discussed that, right? And uh, let's see. So instead... Necromancy 4, you can instead reanimate 4, reanimate 2, reanimate 1, restore 4 to your leader, and put a fleeting joy into your hand. Oh my god, I, I, I want to do a full reanimate deck now. But as we can see, I just want to see what Luna's game and Anna is, because it, like, it did like three things, so I'm assuming one is Luna's game is reanimate 4, 2, and 1, that's Luna's, and then Anna's is going to be the heal and the fleeting joy, which makes sense, it kind of synergizes with their cards. So for the cost of it which is five and based on how shadowcraft works and how the deck is going to be tiered in my opinion the necromancy is definitely going to come off so for necromancy four which if the other card is activated which at that point it would be kind of hard i think at turn five for it to, to be activated think of that you know for four you're getting a four cost card that died uh two cost card to die and a one cost card to die and i think the uh, the fighting geisha whatever I think is a uh, three cost, but it could technically be summoned other the four cost if nothing else four costs have died yet so that's really strong and the two cost will cover this so two costs can come bring this back and again it will give you this this lovely little thing Woo! They, so these two cards synergize really well the Gremory of death teller and friends forever definitely synergizing what about jack thing uh if this card was summoned with a spell effect so this card can also come back really 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 cool stuff that we're seeing right now so i'm definitely hyped for shadow shadow Eva uh evil reanimate shadows looking pretty good swordcraft is looking okay it, it, they can't do much with Soulcraft right now, except give you another deck type to play with, which is bringing back Machina for it, but Evo's too strong. 
uh, Rune looking dumb strong. Forest Machina looking pretty good. I think everything is pretty much revolving around that, plus with its current support. Doing really good on that. And then we're gonna go to the last one. This is a neutral legendary, the second one, which is Natura Almacunus. Uh, that looks pretty cool. Fusion, Machina, or Natura. Uh, fanfare, deal X to an enemy follower, put X random Machina or Natural cards from your deck into your hand. If this card is fused with Machina and Natural cards, subtract three from their cost. X equals the number of cards fused to this card. So, pretty cool. So if you're running a multi deck, a Machina Natural deck, even if you put one of eight, you uh, can bring in two X amount of cards. So you can actually really fill your hand with this, but that's fanfare. So that's when you play this on turn seven and you can bring in cards that are really help out to that. And it's going to be a Machina or Natural card. But I think even still, if you were to load this up with one of the type, like if you load this up with Natra, and obviously whatever deck you're putting it into, then you're gonna get five Natra cards, let's say. Five Natra cards into your hand and do five damage to an enemy follow, plus get a 6-6 six, six that does Evo for full stats. That's really strong, same thing in the Machina deck. But if you're running a dual type, which I think I don't actually think I've even considered that so far with running a Natra Machina deck, I think maybe Forest can do it. I think because, you know, they both have that kind of thing. I don't know what other deck type can really run it like that, but this card is definitely good. I, I like both of the legendaries, the other one being Gabriel. And I think both of the natural legendaries are really good, and it's going to make the metagame really difficult. Uh, maybe what? Maybe uh, Machina. Well, oh yeah, Haven kind of can run uh, Machina. Machina and Natura a little bit. Um, Daria? No. No, I don't think Rune's gonna bother with it. Dragon might do it if the if the dragon if the Machina can support the natural BS, then they'll probably do it. Especially with Curse Fury, which is absolutely stupid. I think everything is pretty good right now. I think that the game and the this this expansion is looking fantastic. And the best thing about it are these choice cards. Uh, yes, you can use both, but it's it's giving flexibility in the decks and the fact that it's Natura and Machina is allowing a lot of flexibility and that's good in a game where you, you can have a very strong deck but you can have another strong deck that beats out some of the other decks just a little bit different so that's I think that the more avenues they give people the more people will walk on the streets <sighs> Not too sure about that analogy, but what I am sure about is that every day at the casino is your lucky day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.